Good morning, friends. Steve here from Southern Illinois again. And as you can see, the green is growing. Our pergola here is filling in. The honeysuckle, you can see in the background, is perfuming the air. I love spring. Even with the unstable weather, because I'm back in a coat today, because the nights are now back down in the 40 40s, and uh, I'm shivering. So I'll never forget the day my daughter was born. Labor was not easy for my wife, and especially the final stages. She pushed for over three hours, and when, when Terrell was born, Vivian was exhausted. I was so exhausted that after the birth, she was just, just shaking and trembling. And when the nurses brought Terrell to, to Vivian to hold, Vivian reached out and she was shaking so bad that she slapped her baby daughter in the face. And she said, no, take her away, take her away. So I got to hold my daughter. They took us back to the labor room uh, to recover. And um, for the next three hours, Vivian slept deeply in the bed beside me. And I was there holding Terrell, all bundled up. And it was, I was sitting in a recliner and I leaned the recliner back and Terrell was just curled up on my chest, just this little tender bundle of, and that three hours was just pure bliss for me. I dozed off and on and I'd wake up and here would be my daughter laying on me. And that experience just bonded us. She, her, her fingers just entwined in my heart. I would do anything for that girl. COVID has been really, really hard on Vivian and I because we've been forced to be apart from the people that are most precious in our lives. Now, when, I, when my son was born, I could tell you about that experience, about the bolt of lightning that struck me from across the room when our eyes met, and it was like, wow, I have a son. And it's not that I love my daughter any less. In fact, I didn't even know his gender when that experience happened, but it was just like this instantaneous bond. And if you've seen pictures of him on Facebook with me, okay, we call him the clone, and it's not just his looks that are like me. He thinks like me. He has my sense of humor. And he loves gardening like me, okay? <laughs> my children are precious to me. There are other things in my life that are precious. I have, have a lifetime of music that I've written down in notebooks that I've created through, through the years. Um, those are precious to me. Um, I've spent decades now preparing sermons and, and seeking out ways to communicate the power of the gospel in my own life to other people. Those are stored on my computer. Um, Vivian has photo albums from before digital photography that, you know, of our wedding, uh, of our time in Indonesia. Um, our children have a photo, each of our children have a, has a photo album. Vivian and I were talking the other night, I, I asked her, uh, as I was thinking about this topic this week, I asked her, um, just what's the most precious things in our house to you? And she mentioned a family heirloom, a, a bed set that she had inherited she said, but I don't have it anymore. I've already passed that on to the children. And so she came up with something different, okay? This, this beautiful box contains one of Vivian's treasures. And this was what she mentioned as being one of the most valuable things to her in our, in our house. It's a little rose quartz heart. It's not expensive. But to her, it's one of the most precious things that she owns. And I asked her, 
Which of our kids would you send back into our house if it was on fire to grab your quartz heart? And she said, like none. The topic this week, the question, the touchstone is, does God really care for my life? We've talked about the believability of God as being a touchstone to the spiritual life of the men and women in the Bible. We've talked of his characteristics of being a God of, who, who, who seeks relationships and, and is compassionate. But you know, you can do all of those things and be emotionally distanced. You know, I'm a doctor, I'm a healthcare professional, a compassionate healthcare professional, but there's always a professional distance between me and the people I care about. There's a difference between the way I care about the pe other people in my life and the way I care about my son, about my daughter, about my wife. And that's as it should be. So the question is, how much does God really care for my life? And the passage in the Bible that came to my mind was John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he sent his son. He sent his son into this burning inferno, knowing the suffering that he was going to suffer and the death that he was going to face because he loved Steve. Because he loved Steve you. That's how much God cares about my life and yours. But as Vivian and I were, t was t were talking about this, she said, but there's a problem here, Steve. And she she's right. There is a problem. You see, we talk about God as knowing the future. And, if, and, and even in Jesus' lifetime, Jesus was telling his disciples, I'm going to die, but I'm going to be resurrected. So aren't we kind of talking out both sides of our mouths when we say God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die and then we say God knew that Jesus was going to be resurrected. As we were talking about this, I said, so you're saying that if I knew that Eric was going to survive the fire, that he was going to come out alive on the other hand, it wouldn't matter to me the suffering that he was going to suffer as I sent him in to rescue your rose quartz heart. And she just laughed. Because immediately you see the irony. It's not about whether they survive or not. We care about the suffering they go through. And the same thing is true about God. This is a powerful touchstone for me, okay? I chose to embrace the believability of God. That was a choice. It's not something that was proven to me. And for many of you, it's going to be a choice. Some of you, it comes easily. And for others, it's a real trial. You have to believe in spite of the evidence in your life. You have to believe because of the evidence in other people's lives. And that's not something that's been easy for humans to do ever. But this touchstone, that God cared so much about me that he was willing to send his son to suffer and die for me, that's powerful. And it became more powerful once I had my own children. And, and as the years have gone on, I mean, my children are adults. They're no longer babies anymore. Okay. Um, but they have become more precious to me as the years have gone by rather than less. I would do anything for them within my power when they were in trouble. And God would do the same for you.
there's still intellectual problems that go along with this, but let that touchstone sink into your heart and you will find a glimmer of the true power of the gospel. Be safe, my friends. Be prudent, but above all, keep looking up. I'll see you next week.